Uh, one, I'm going to bring something up right now. So you're thinking of a matrix here with columns and grids. So if what happens if we go beyond uh, three rows here? You can see the height has stopped applying. This is very intentional because now we will need to declare up to three rows here. Beyond three rows, this declaration doesn't apply anymore. So it's very much we're controlling very specifically, like in, in, a, in, a, in a grid and coordinates, what we're controlling here with our columns and grids. Uh, we've also got the um, concept of row gap. This is your gutter between the rows. So if you want more space, you just can simply bump that up a little bit. You can see that the space between the rows has uh, bumped up. You can do the same thing with columns really easily. So you can control those gutters uh, in between both of them really, really cleanly. You're not messing around with margins, negative margins, positive padding, and all these wrapping divs and things like things like that. It's all controlled right here just in the CSS, and you're, you're writing less HTML because of it. Uh, so we've got some other things here. Uh, let me go back to the columns here. Let me uncomment this guy and see what happens. So now what's happened here is we've declared a fourth column over on the far side there. And that one has a declaration of auto. That's just basically going to say these guys are 10 rounds. We're limiting the width of this column here. 10, 10, 10. This one's auto. That's just going to tell it to take up the remaining space. So this guy is always going to get uh, wider or smaller. Uh, so you can, you can declare auto on these things to kind of take up space. Uh, we also have the concept of... Um, so it would get a little bit laborious to have to declare all these columns. Um, and you have, or if you don't want to, or you know, there's a shorthand for this, it's, it's a repeat, uh, which basically says uh, three columns here, and then each of the columns are going to be 10 rounds wide. So it's sort of a shorthand for what we were doing right over here. Um, if you wanted to, we could change the number there to four, and you can see that the fourth column is also getting the 10 round width. So we had a new unit that I talked about quickly before. So here it is in action. We've got uh, three columns with one uh, fraction each. So they are basically going to take up equal amounts of space. Basically what we're saying is we've got three columns, each of them should be equal in this particular presentation here. Um, and they're always going to grow and take up space. So basically it's almost like we did with 33%. But we did that instead with taking up proportionally the fractions of the space. So we could change this last one to two. You can see that the proportion has changed here. Now this it's 25%, 25%, and 50%. So you've changed that proportion. Uh, it's, it's much better than we're letting the browser try to handle, uh, we're letting the browser handle all these percentages and things like that instead of having to pass around with them ourselves, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, one more example here, a couple more examples. So we can use fractions in uh, conjunction with fixed widths. So the last column here, we always want to be 10 rounds. Think of like a sidebar that's sort of like a fixed width. Maybe you've got some uh, ads or something like that over there. That needs to be a specific width for your sidebar. Um, these three are just going to take up the proportional width uh, that's uh, this one is not filling up. So you can see that these three are growing, and this one is just staying 10 rounds. And that unit here, I'm just using rounds here, uh, but it can be whatever uh, unit that we have in CSS. You could make that 50 pixels, which I'm breaking the layout, but uh, you know it could be something like that as well if you have like a specific uh, width that you need. Again, we're still on the parent here, and then what we're changing on the parent is affecting all of the children here, all these uh, children names. 
Uh, so, any questions so far? Everybody following along okay? Okay. This is up in CodePen. The link is in the slides. So you can come in here and you can kind of mess around a little bit with yourself. Uh, if you want to. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, this next code pen is basically just what we did before. We had five lines of code. Uh, I have now shortened this down to three lines of code. Because just like with most things with CSS, there's a shorthand, there's a long hand to do it while you're like trying to learn it and understand it, and then there's a shorthand so you can write less code, less kilobytes, and save a little bit of performance here and there. So what we wrote before, I've now condensed down into three lines. Uh, so before we had uh, grid template columns and grid template rows. That can be condensed down into just grid templates. And it's a little bit new syntax here because we have a slash in between. This is basically the first, uh, the first one here is rows. What we want our rows to do, in this particular case, we just want our rows to be auto, that means whatever height they want to be. And then over here, we've got columns. So uh, we've condensed things down into these um, two decorations here. So that one's supposed to be over here, so I'm commenting on that. And then grid gap is the same thing. We can declare both the row, uh, the row gap and the column gap um, at the same time. Row, uh, row coming first, column coming second. Uh, so you just need to remember that once you get uh, used to it a little bit. Otherwise, this is the same exact, same exact example as we had before. So if I wanted to change this to ten, or I'd like to do a four, you see that now I added a fourth column, and the children start respecting that uh, column decoration. So, yes, this looks, you know, three lines of code, that's pretty cool. I mean, we're kind of can, you know, floats is pretty laborious with the amount of code you had to write, and we got Flexbox, a little bit less code. But you can still do this in Flexbox if you wanted to. And I have the same exact example here, but this is just using Flexbox. We've got display flex on the parent. We'll let things wrap with flex wrap. And then we're doing some calculation to make sure that these are 33%. And so I put this up there so you can compare and contrast, so you can kind of get your mind around. Well, there's a little bit of overlap here with grid and flexbox. Um, we're going to get into a little bit here, just a little bit, um, when should you use one or the other. Um, yeah, so there's that. Any, any questions? I have a link here that explains a little bit more about grid gap, because there's a few more little intricacies with it. Um, let you guys take a look at in our own time. So here's an example of um, grid and flex box together. How, how, can we, how can we use them together? So I think what they're really meant to be is they're meant to be used together. So in this particular example, I'm going to be pulling in some bacon ipsum. Uh, really nice API. You can hit an API and get some uh, lorem ipsum, uh, some bacon ipsum. Uh, So we've got a layout here. So we've got like uh, like a card layout kind of thing going on here. Uh, so we have um, at certain sizes when your screen is wide enough, you got three per row. You got a little bit smaller of a browser. You got two. Eventually, you get down to one that stacks. It's kind of like a, you've seen this paradigm before. It's kind of like a Pinterest masonry grid kind of thing. Uh, this is using both grid and flexbox together. So how did this happen? How did we do this? Uh, first of all, we have a parent grid, put a max width on it, and I'm centering it with margin left auto and margin right auto. This is a pretty old school paradigm. You want to center something, you give something a max width, and you put it in the center of the page. It won't get any larger than that. Uh, also on that parent, we declare display grid, and we set up our grid template. So for the height of these items, we want them to be auto. So we'll let the car be however tall we want it to be. And then we have the, the columns, which is really where the grid on the parent here is really doing the work and making this layout sort of uh, come to fruition here. Uh, I've got a couple different, a uh, couple of um, new uh, decorations here. Uh, we've got auto fit, and we've got min max. And we'll start with min max. So min is we want the children to be a minimum width. 
and then the max is we don't want them to be any wider than that. Uh, so the max will prevent things from uh, possibly busting our width of our container, but we want them to be at least a minimum, uh, have a minimum width because we don't want them to get smaller because then their card, you know, the text will become unreadable uh, and things like that. So there's this concept of min-max. There's uh, a bunch of different things that go along with that. And there's a handy DNA link here. I only just found, recently found the site. It's called alligator.il. We have some really nice exp explanations for some of these specific declarations for um, CSS grid. Um, and it goes into more detail there. There's some different caveats with using min-max. Uh, sort of a common sense type thing would be that your max, your, your min cannot be larger than your max. It just won't work. It needs to be smaller, a smaller unit um, than the maximum. Um, and But you can use, uh, the minimum can't use our fraction, our new fraction unit that we just went over, uh, but your maximum can. So there's some little caveats with uh, using min-max. Uh, on your own time, come through and take a read and uh, learn a little bit more about that. Uh, then uh, auto fits. I didn't have a link for. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but everybody remember what auto fit means? I'm losing it off the top of my head right here. Anybody? No? Google it on your own time. <laughs> but this making this, this basically making this masonry you know, helping make this masonry layout work. And then uh, grid gap, we both we want both of our columns and our rows just to be one rem. That's all we'll put space in between here. Uh, and then, so how does Flexbox work with grid? Well, we want our cards to all have the same height. You can see here on this, this third one, you've got different variable heights of content, paragraph content here, with our bacon, bacon pencil. So where Flexbox comes in handy is uh, they can be the same size, we'll make things the same size. And also it'll push that link down so you want this link always down at the bottom of the card. That's what we're using Flexbox here, so it's sort of that positioning to force the thing down to the bottom. And we're doing that here. We're saying display flex uh, on the card, flex direction column, so it can stack. Uh, we want things to align uh, the flex starts. And then our link, we're using margin top auto to stick that blue link here, that blue button link, down to the bottom. So this is really where you might use Flexbox and grid together. Um, is sort of uh, creating your grid, the actual rows and columns with grid, but then uh, positioning of things with Flexbox. That's really what Flexbox is sort of meant for. It's supposed to position things, whereas we're used to use floats to position things, which is really bad, mostly bad idea. Any questions? How did those pens private? It should be, and it should be. I, I, I had a hard time finding them personally. Yeah. Uh, okay. I will. Should be private. Yeah. I, I, are you talking about like the link on the meetup for like the slides? Yeah. I found the, uh, the flexbox ones, but I didn't find the grid grid ones. Um, but I didn't go to the website. I went to district pens and did not work. Sorry. It should all be open. Okay. Um. After the after my talking. Uh, later tonight or tomorrow, I'll go and I'll put all these code pen links into the meetup, into the, uh, the link in your notes work. Work. Okay. What was that? The link in your notes work. Oh, so okay. it's the link on the oh. In the PDF? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put them in here as well. I just didn't have them. Okay. Um, so, when well, we're talking about grid, what's normal grid thing that we might do. Uh, I call this a skeleton layout, uh, where we're gonna have a header, a sidebar, a main content area, and a footer. That's that's a grid. Uh, that's perfect use, and I think that's where you might want to start incorporating CSS grid into your uh, websites and your apps, is uh, to use it for something like that, because that's going to, you're gonna be writing a lot less code than floating a sidebar, floating your main content area, or even the flex box trying to do that. Uh, do the same thing. So this is a very basic example, just to sort of get our um, feet wet here. We're going to build on this example here with another code pen in a few moments. Uh, 
But this is a very basic example where we don't really have a lot of HTML here. We have a wrapper div uh, that's basically our um, uh, grid parent. And then we have our grid children, our header, our side for our sidebar, our main content area. We've got our main uh, uh, HTML5 tag there. We've got our footer. Um, very minimal HTML code. Uh, and what we're doing is uh, we're going to learn a couple new things here as well. Uh, so our wrapper is our uh, grid parent, and we've declared um, three columns. This is actually a three-column grid here. I'll explain that here in a moment. Uh, rows is auto, so whatever content is inside of sidebar or header or the, any of the other ones, they will just grow. It'll be whatever size they need to be based on the content. There's a new paradigm here of uh, template areas. This is pretty cool. This is basically like sketching with code, which uh, it may take a little getting used to. It took me a moment to get my mind around it. Uh, but if you uh, see where my cursor is, is here, we've got a three column grid, and we're declaring basically a total of uh, nine quadrants, uh, where we have our one row up at the header. We've got uh, header, header, header. Uh, and we've got sidebar main main. So what we're doing here, which really the magic is happening with the sidebar main main, is we're saying sidebar should be, uh, main should be twice as wide as the sidebar unit. We're just declaring that here with areas. Um, so we could, let's say we wanted, um, so sidebar here is about 33%, main content's gonna be about 66%. So let's say we wanted uh, a, 25%, 75%, uh, you would need to declare some more columns here. So we would have another header. And you can see I'm breaking things because it needs to be very precise. It's, it's, it's important. We need to make sure that for uh, each column and row, we have, we're, we're doing the right thing here and we have uh, matching. Since we have, we want four columns, so I also need to change this to have that. Uh, I got another thing I need to change here. I need my max width to be 40. But now we have 0.5% and 75% for our uh, for here. So you can, that's the way you kind of change this, this grid layout here. Uh, does that make sense? Is that kind of cool? It's, it's different. So you're, you're kind of sketching with code here where you're declaring your areas, your quadrants of things. Um, you can see here in this particular instance, uh, I have a media query here for a max width. Uh, when it gets down to a certain size, and we just want things to stack. We can use Flexbox for that. We just make things stack. And here I'm reversing the order of the sidebar. So that's another good use for using Flexbox with grid is you can reorder things with Flexbox and you're doing that here in our mobile layout. So this, I think what you're going to probably get dipping your toes into um, uh, grid in this kind of scenario. But basically, when you're starting a site, setting up your header, sidebar, main content area footer, your page templates, your master pages, whatever you call them, there's a good use case for, for uh, uh, CSS grid. And if you're not concerned about something like Internet Explorer 11, you can let that type of browser that doesn't support CSS grid, you can just stack your layout, maybe they get a more basic stack view, or maybe mobile view or something. That. Um, you can do other things with CSS grid. So we can nest grids. So building on the example that we just did, we've got our header, sidebar, main content area, and footer. But we also have a grid in here, where maybe let's say it's the blog post. We've got main content there, but we have some related items. It's also sort of, we want them sort of in a, in a two by two grid. You can also use grids. You can put a grid inside of a grid, just like you do, you can do flexbox inside of flexbox, uh, and so on. So, uh, magic here is up at the top here. We've got related articles, and it's just, you can take my word for it, we've got a display grid inside of this uh, other grid. And here we are, since we have a uh, two by two grid, we can just do a shorthand of, um, you can see here, uh, they're just going to take up the Proportionally, um, one fraction of units, 
you've got grid gap and things with just uh, that before. This is just showing that you can put grids inside of grids. Any questions with that?